Good day, gamers. Welcome to Our Gaming Life. I am your host, a formal bust. With me today is... Your boy, York, from York Corp. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have plenty to dive into, but first, our sponsor, H2O. Drink it up or die. Oh, his spot. Always. Always. Always, always hydrates you. Always. Mm. Unless it's got salt in it, but that's, that's not, that's not, a, not a positive choice, I would think. No, well, no, actually. No. no, never. Never drink salt water. No. I'm saying about a like, bit of a tangent. Positive? Would it have a positive charge? No. No, it have a negative charge? I don't know. It's salt water. That's fair. I mean, if you're a scientist, you, yeah. you know. It'll take Sorry. electricity through it. I know that. <laughs> but <laughs> thank you to our sponsor, H2O. Yes. Um, without salt, currently. Um, first things first, a little education on video game terminology. Your, you remember what uh, last uh, episode's terminology was? I have... I don't know if it was the last one or the previous. I know one was developer and one was publisher. I don't know which one was last. Publisher was last. Publisher was last? Yes. And, and was before it was, was, de was developer. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, yes. okay. So you're, yes. you're advancing. You're I'm advancing. I'm, so you remember the I, last two instead of the one before the last episode. You're, the you're one before better. that, there I, I, <laughs> I can't recall the exact name, but there it's <clears throat> something code or... No, no, no. Where? Mm-hmm. It's abandonware. Abandonware. There we go. It's, it. I know it's like. It. I know it's not malware. No. It's no. it's software that's basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't don't worry. When we get enough episodes in, there will be a test. I know. I know. And I'm 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 getting scared. However you do on that, will determine whether or not you're. <laughs> no. No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. Good God. Totally kidding. No. Uh, but today though, we already talked about this a little bit. Um, you mentioned the term, and I thought let's have it. it it's a term. Mm. Roguelike. Oh, yeah. Roguelike, all one word, uh, spelled exactly how you would think. Um, it is a subgenre of games primarily featuring uh, procedurally generated levels, exploration, resource management, and permadeath. Also, permanent death. Like, permanent. Like, you die, and yeah. you, the game kills you. No, mm, no, mm. no you, you, you die, and if you die in the game, like, you, you can't load an old save. You can't, like, oh, let me just go to the last checkpoint. No, you're dead. you got to start the game from the beginning. And in some cases, you have to start the game from the beginning as a new character, which you can always make the same character, but... Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, they are usually designed to be more challenging than typical games. You know, typical games. That's... Everyone knows what a typical game is. <laughs> of course, yes. You know, what's your, what, what would be your typical game? Uh, Solitaire. Yes. <laughs> The most the most radical political game of our t of our time, hey man, solitaire. There's the Reds and the Blacks. There's the, the Kings and the Queens. You talk about the monarchy. No, and it's, the Hearts. You know, and it, the Clubs and the Spades. It's it's very and all on a white background. They're always on a white. Always background. on a white background. Always. You can change it if you want, but it's never mm -hmm, the default. Mm -hmm. Never the default. What is that solitaire? Answer me. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and. Roguelike, uh, as many people might know already, was named after the the term, the subgenre, was named after the 1980 game called Rogue, also known as Rogue Exploring the Dungeons of Doom. Um, Rogue was, of course, uh, created by Glenn Witchman, uh, Michael Toy, and Ken Arnold, and it was a turn-based permadeath game hmm. in which it was all randomly generated. Now, of course, 1980, like... There were some limitations on it, but it was still, like, procedurally generated, and, like, uh, it was very much um, a dungeon crawler, just straight-up dungeon crawler, procedurally generated. Uh, very popular back in back in the day when it was out. I can imagine. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of Rogue. Uh, it's, like I said, 1980, and, and it also, like, it came out in different waves. Like, there was, like, I think three official ones um because like it got circulated by a ton of geeks who loved playing it mm -hmm. and then it also eventually came out on like official platforms and stuff like that and each iteration of it changed as mm. it went um n not really like changed but like made it look better you know yeah because yeah um but yeah no and uh, the uh, creators of it were very much um inspired by both um just text base either uh, book text or you know video game text based choose your own adventures as well as dungeons and dragons surprisingly uh no not really i'm not oh. i'm not too surprised about that but you know dungeons and dragons man makes sense makes, makes sense, sense. <laughs> making sense i mean 
if I could interrupt, I mean, mm-hmm. I think about a lot of the games that I really, really have, like, a game that I want to go back and play all the time is Star Wars Knights of the Republic. Like, that's one of my favorites. And that is, that's a, that's a D&D game right yeah. there. That's yeah. a D&D system right there. It's a D&D party game. Yep. You could even say, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, and um, the Rogue was especially um, important in this because it was the first, it, it was the first to... Um, incorporate both procedurally generated stuff which the entire game is procedurally generated all the levels dungeons uh enemy encounters and treasures you picked up as well as adding permadeath in there so that's really where it kind of stamped it and said this is roguelike mm. roguelike because if you die the whole game the whole game world completely rebuilds itself yeah um and i mean you have terms like rogue light right which is where it's like okay Maybe the main overworld that you're in is the same always, but every dungeon you go in will be randomly generated. You know, yeah. so it's not the whole game, right? Like they're, they're you, you've seen more games recently and just in the past go to more of a we don't want it to be completely roguelike, but we do like that procedural generation. Yeah, um, so the, it's a thing. It's an interesting. It's an interesting tool to have, and I understand why people would use it and want to have it as like. Not really like a sidebar or like a, but just as really side missions, I guess it, it make it makes sense if it's, it seems, I don't want to say cheap, I just kind of throw it in there. I mean, it depends how it's done. Like you can exactly you, like it can know. it could be really great. It can be like oh, if you have a, a a system and a thing that procedurally generates really quality dungeons or areas, and can do that and give you a unique experience that you're like, oh, this is similar, but I really really like it. I I understand and I would love that. Yeah, but. If I think about something like <laughs> Skyrim's dungeons, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that's, uh, yeah, you play one, you kind of play one dungeon, you've done a lot of dungeons. Yeah. 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 It's like, ah, it's another Nord ruin. Ah. And I mean, to me, that's kind of like, to me, you wouldn't get that. To me, you wouldn't get Skyrim dungeons in a precisely generated dungeon. Mm-hmm. This was pretty much every single Nord dungeon have in Skyrim. Got the puzzle. Got a puzzle. Got the uh, got the final boss uh, with the shout. At got the a end. shortcut at the end to get outside quickly and fast travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much once 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 you go into a, enough Skyrim dungeons, you're kind of like, I know what to expect. Roughly, mm-hmm. it's going to be different rooms with enemies. You know, and, and, and procedural generation can actually subvert that. You know, mm-hmm. even if you get used to the way that the game is procedurally generating game uh, uh, content for you, it might be like. Okay, but well, the game's used to you, you know, has been giving you all of this, and now it changes up how it's giving it to you. So, yeah, yeah, and you can you can even add procedural gener- uh, generation where it's not just like, oh, here's everything I have to choose from. It's like, well, maybe here's everything I have to choose from, and I vary the amount of how much I give you each time too. Yeah, so, okay. It's 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 very interesting, uh, and there's a lot of games. Uh, we've talked about the Flame and the Flood recently. Mm-hmm. Was a game we talked about that is procedurally procedurally generated. Hmm going to move on from roguelike games because I'm getting into a tongue twister of procedural generation. Procedural. Jural. Jural? Procedural. Procedural games. <laughs> procedural roguelike games. Yes, roguelike. So. Very, very, very important term in video game terminology as a subgenre. I mean, um, I think it's pretty important. Oh, no, I, I certainly do. I just, you know, get into what... You know, get into the difference between what a genre and a subgenre is. It's like, well, we're we're splitting hairs at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a genre. You know, I would say they're all mm-hmm. genres. Uh, Still I have... waiting for that roguelike solitaire game. Oh, gosh, <laughs> hey man, it would. You, you know, I'm not getting you into that. Yeah, no, okay, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about game wise off the top of your head? Uh, when I hear about roguelike games, I immediately think of like the forest, mm-hmm. like that I've been playing. Yep. Because that's probably the most roguelike game I've ever played. Or like a game like Minecraft, kind of. That's um, kind of... No, but that's that, that kind of has, like... Sp- I haven't played Minecraft very much. I, I would say not story-wise, because mm. Minecraft, there is one story, pretty much. Yeah. Like, lore-wise, and there is one way... There is one end boss beat the game, right? True. True. But every single world you go into in Minecraft, yes. Every single world, unless you generate it from a seed, is its own random world. So, yeah, no. That does definitely be it, yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's really it that I have because I mean, I like those games. I love them. I love the influence mm-hmm. they have because they make they make other games more interesting. They they give it another layer of depth and they give it something. Yeah. They give it more fun, yes. more to do, and I I'll never say no to that. Yes. No. And uh, yeah. Moving on 
games we've been playing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to start out. Um, I did a first impression on a little uh, sort of a game. I had fun with it, so I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, <laughs> this was uh, either Orca or Aura. Uh uh fpv dot skydive huh um this was a well it is it still is it's free to play um it is a drone (laughs) flying simulator um i believe yeah this is when i was doing um completely um three uh not 3d i was doing completely keyboard controls on this one oh my lord which i'll be honest with this game this game was made for keep for like joysticks Ah, uh, right. gotcha, gotcha, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you can actually even hook up, um, like, an actual controller for a drone to it. Like, an actual drone controller. With oh, the, cool. You can plug in, like, radio... I think it was, like, there's a radio frequency thing. But, yeah, no, this... Yeah, this this game, for being free, is pretty solid in what it has, which is a couple of maps. I think there was, like, six maps. Um, there was a con- controller configuration, both for your radio one, like, mm-hmm. a professional one, and just, you know, Xbox 360 uh, controller like I had. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you sort of get the hang of it, and then you start crashing around. Um, it's it's good, and for free, you can have as much fun as you want. It's literally a, a sandbox simulator. You just fly around as a drone. Um, I mean, you know, I would like to see more from it, but the basics of what it is is like learning how drones operate in a video game world. Yeah. It's it's perfect. It's perfect for that. And he and the creator even has like, as you saw earlier, some uh, uh, I guess like racing uh, uh, arches and stuff like that. But yeah, have you? What was I gonna say? Mm-hmm. Do you get motion sickness very much from this playing this game very much? I didn't. Um, but I also have never found myself to have a motion sickness problem. Gotcha. Okay. Good. Um, I feel like like the view of it is like. You can see the view of it is a little strange. Oh yeah, also a very good thing for simulators. Mm. Um, you can the the menu that you have in game, like in the middle of a map, same menu you have from the main menu. So you can change everything. Um, here is messing with the controls just a little <laughs> bit. Um, yeah, this, this did not suit me. Um, oh yeah, also another cool thing. If you get flipped upside down as a drone. In real life, you wouldn't be able to lift up because you can't reverse your drone motors and go upside down. So this game, if you flip upside down, will kind of give you a second and then reset you and just flip you right right side up. Oh, okay, cool. So, Very nice. Yeah, nice little quality of life thing there. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you use an Xbox 360 controller? That, uh, at first, I use keyboard and mouse. I do not I do not suggest that. Mm. I'd suggest use a uh, Xbox. It, something with joysticks is really what you need. I will do the same because I have like, one thing. that plugs in that I will use because... Mm. Yeah, no. <laughs> that looks like something I'd much rather use for joysticks than a keyboard. Yeah. Have you... Uh, I've played... Uh, and this is actually for work. <laughs> One of the things they're working on is working with... They're actually like, working with little drone things. Yeah. And I've played little drone apps on my phone. This Ooh. looks very similar to it and yeah. like a lot of fun. No, I So I, I would really want to play it. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I haven't played any of them on my phone. But you mm. know, I figured they would have some of those. This, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it was made for, like, phones or whatever, but works fine on PC and everything, and, oh yeah, we'll, I'll, we'll leave it up a little bit more, because you go back to the main menu, and let's see, yeah, there's a couple different maps, yeah. Oh, cool. and, and each map has, like, a couple different setups, it looks like, so, like, you're meant to race, I didn't get to racing. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Just running around and having fun. Well, attempting Not to. Not funny, but just, you know. Yeah. Trying oh, to yeah. those controls. Four, four maps. Four maps with different uh, race layouts. Yeah. Um, Which was your favorite of the maps? Uh, I think this one, just because how much stuff was in it. Mm-hmm. And I kept finding as I like began to um, be able to fly, like you can see those um, uh, smokestacks on the side. Well, yeah. we're on the side earlier. They're hollow, of course, and they have like holes in the bottom, so you could go. Ah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. You go to the top and go to the bottom. Yes. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun. Yes. But yes, no, very good. I mean, some stuff like the trees don't look amazing, but like, I mean, it's a simulator. You're supposed to be running around. Um, yeah. So I had a good 20 minutes of fun with it, and I've touched back on it once or twice, just being like, all right, can I fly a drone? I should, <laughs> I should not buy a drone. Uh, if anyone ever, you know, if you ever see me being, I, I think I should get a drone. Stop me <laughs> and tell me to just throw that money out the window instead. Um, but yeah, that is uh, Orca 
or aura <laughs> fpv.skydive uh yeah, my no. first impression of it at the very least uh and very much enjoyed it hmm i have to give it a try because that looks like a lot of fun oh, yeah. i uh yeah it's weird to say without the q, the, the q and the u it's weird to say that orca aura yeah I, probably, I think aura probably makes more sense yeah it's o-r-q-a so no. i don't know i don't know yeah um, the perspective looks strange but that, that would be the perspective of a drone yeah uh i've seen some of the yeah, videos and the, stuff the, and how the fast perspective it, moves. Of it is like it, and it, it even does a little bit of fish eye lens which is what you would have on a drone camera pretty uh, appropriate most of them but yeah uh your yes what, what game wise uh i actually have been very <laughs> lazy on my uploads because i've been busy with work that's fine but uh a lot of them that i have yet to upload have to be the continuation of like my call of cthulhu playthrough mm -hmm. um I, I actually my biggest dilemma honestly right now that i'm dealing with is uh with my XCOM playthrough mm -hmm. because if i could be fully honest and a bit of a spoiler for it um i've been playing a little bit i played through it and you've played XCOM, mm -hmm. correct a bit of a spoiler there is a part where you're supposed to capture a live alien yes and capturing that live alien tells you you should capture this other specific live alien right mm -hmm. now i or later on in my playthrough i got a little a little little ambitious and i went ahead and skipped ahead and and and, and adopted the specific alien thinking mm -hmm. oh well i could just skip all those extra steps and then did so and then got no updates for like six episodes yep. and i was like man i'm not getting anywhere with this game like i'm, I'm doing fine but i'm not moving forward at all yep. and then finally it was like yeah i need to capture a live alien and i'm like holy shit okay so i'm thinking about kind of restarting from scratch even though it's been only just one episode just going ahead and I, mean, I, I don't i don't know if it would still be worth uploading people just want to see me spin my my wheels for a little bit i mean you're playing xcom one i think you should just say you know what we're going with it canon lore of xcom one mm -hmm. you failed <laughs> yes we all failed um if you've played xcom 2 and spoilers for xcom 2 beginning i guess surprise if no one knows yeah but for a game that's yeah. out for how long now well wow. there's always spoilers there's always spoilers um, yeah but yeah no um canonically the developers of xcom were like hey 90 percent of y'all failed xcom 1 or didn't complete the game so that's the canon ending for xcom 1 and xcom 2 starts with we failed aliens took over we're guerrilla fighting which i love and they did great about it mm -hmm. and they allowed you know players to have a redemption arc yes if, if they wanted to um, i would like to know the stats though on xcom 2 how many people completed it <laughs> oh man uh I'm, oh my god that's next after this yeah one. that's that's yeah for mm -hmm. sure the um, long haul of it but yeah other than that little glitch of uh progression or i guess you not paying attention uh you know there's there, there's a fun thing that i do like about xcom specifically is that and i talk about it and i think we've talked about it in the past just even though you might have a hundred percent chance to hit an enemy it's a random number generator. it's still a random you could still miss you could still miss and it's like i am literally right next to you how can I not shoot you in the face and now you just killed my soldier? One thing, I, one thing, um, and I don't know if XCOM 1 does this as much, but I know XCOM 2 does it, that I hate more than thinking I have 100% like sh chance to shoot them mm -hmm. is when I shoot them and the bullet literally destroys the cover they're in and looks like it goes through their body. Oh, right, yeah. And the game's like, well, you didn't actually hit. We just are suck at showing the graphics. Cur yeah. yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But no, it's... I, I just love this game. I could play it again and again and again because it's just... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's one of the few turn-based games that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do like... <laughs> I named all the medals Spider-Man, Man-Spider, and... Uh, Spider, spider, and maybe just because you know why not? It's fun. Not? I have yet to, I have yet to nickname my soldiers, mm. which is a fun thing, and I kind of want to leave that up to my viewers if they feel like naming a soldier. I think it'd be kind of fun. Yep. See what they. I'm glad they you bring didn't up. name one after me. They'd probably be dead. Not yet. I think. Uh, you haven't found out how to get a, a crippled uh, soldier hired. <laughs> no, look, the mech suit, man. That's you. <laughs> we'll put you in the mech suit, man. Just, just get great. rid of your body and get you a new hey, one, man. right? Isn't that what hey, you man. want? I mean, why not? Why not? <laughs> I'd rather make you a psionic. Uh, yeah, just a, uh, 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 it's like 
It's like, why, why is your head shaved and uh, 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 you're going around in a wheelchair? Isn't this the wrong uh, X uh, 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 franchise? Shh. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We took a page out of them. Oh man, yeah. No, XCOM solid. I forgot about the. I forgot about because you don't even have. Oh no, you have interceptors. Yeah, no, there are. Interceptors. You have interceptors. Yeah, you have to work. One. Yeah, you have to work for upgrading them, of course. Yeah. And getting them new things and. You have to put a satellite over an area before you can put an interceptor. Yes. Which I feel like is pretty all right. It's just always a big thing I think about at the beginning of choosing. Because you choose at the very beginning of XCOM, like, where you're going to set your base up. And look, aircraft aircraft stuff costs a lot of money. Yeah. So setting it up in, Nor in the North America one, which, like, their bonus is, I think it, like, reduces it by half, mm -hmm. is really tempting. Yeah. But I really also like setting it up in Africa, where the bonus is, like, everybody is an extra 30% all in at the mm -hmm. end of the month. And I'm like, I'm with that. Yeah. Because I need that money. Oh, no, yeah. X, yeah. I, I, I will say about the turn-basedness of XCOM, it does one of the things that I love that turn-based uh, uh, games do, where, like, okay, this person's ending their turn, but if something happens, like Overwatch, I think they call it in the yes, game. Yes, yes. If, if an enemy comes into their line of fire, they'll take a shot. I mean, I think there's, like, a penalty. like It's, like, a 20% dr drop in yeah, the chance yeah. to hit. But, like, ooh, you can still, uh, set up so many different, like, kill scenarios where you know someone's going to run in and just be, like, 4 peel Overwatch in this room, somebody walks in, hopefully they're dead. <laughs> yes. The, uh, yeah. Oh, no, the biggest thing that, that is annoying that I always try and do, at least for XCOM, is my snipers, they can't move and then fire their sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. And they also can't move and then do Overwatch. Because you have to con you have to actively put them on Overwatch. Yeah. Um, so it's imperative always when I play it to like try to get my snipers up a level as quickly as possible so that they can finally take that feat to move and then fire because then they can actually like, now I can use you and you're not going to be a detriment when I put you on the front lines. <laughs> but yeah. it's a... Yeah, X, oh, I love it. XCOM to me has always been a little... Uh, and you can see with the, the, the screen view you have... To me, and, and 2 expanded on this and made it better, but the maps are just so limited in size. Very, very much which, so. I, I understand, you know, there's only so much room on top of your virtual tabletop. Yeah. Uh, but no, two, 2 2 makes it larger, but, like, there's times I get lost in, in the maps on 2. Well, there's, there's so much fog of war. There is times when, like, it's really annoying in, in 1, where even though, like, yeah, there's only one area to go, sometimes it'll, like, put the aliens, like, hide them behind one specific truck in the back corner, mm -hmm. and it's like... Where are you? And I spent like eight turns just looking for these two aliens I need to kill. Yep. And it's like, you little motherfuckers. But no, I still love it. Yeah. I try. I try and I try and cut out as much as <laughs> of much of like me not of just running around as possible. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I would personally rather see like your full missions and not care as much about like management. But that's just me. That's fair. Yeah. I just I mean I mean to me my favorite part of XCOM is just like all right guys you move you move you move you move you move what you move. like like the the staggered advancement of your troops to make sure that like if an alien pops out you don't get decimated in half a turn and I've done that my god I mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll get like bold and I'm like okay I'll send one assault trooper forward to like you know see what's out there next and they send them right into the middle of like eight aliens and it's like well, now he's screwed, and I've lost an assault trooper that I really, really needed. Mm -hmm. That is one thing about right there that was nice about snipers, is that if you if you give them the gunslinger feet, mm. they can fire their pistols better, which then they which then they can move and fire for a lot. Yes. But yeah, eh. XCOM solid game, very fun. Cannot I'm gonna have a lot more coming down the road, and canonically, you you fail. Yes, canonically, I let, do fail. Let humanity down. I'm sorry for that. I didn't mean to. What would you expect when a conglomeration of aliens comes to screw us over? You know, I definitely don't think that we would uh, respond appropriately. Oh, no, we wouldn't. No, no. no. I don't, I don't no. feel like we would have adequate resources to respond appropriately. No. If anything, I love the fantasy of this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're fighting uh, an ex external threat, as it were. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, XCOM. Solid game. Check it out. What does uh, the COM stand for? It's... Extraterrestrial something 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 management. You know, it's it's the organization. Yeah, it's an alphabet soup uh, kind of thing. Gotcha. 
Oh, yes. What do you got going XCOM. on? I, I, I mean, other than flying around in a virtual drone, <laughs> uh, I wanted to because I didn't, I didn't talk about Mother Gunship yet, have I? I don't believe so. No, no uh, I was. Yes, Mother Gunship. Uh, hmm. I stopped playing it because it kept crashing my PC, and you will see why. Who? Um. It's pretty simple. You have two fists, and you have guns in either of them. And they're guns that you can build from the s- like from scratch. Hmm. Like, you go into each mission with a set number of parts that you're allowed to take in, um, and then you just put barrels on the attachment points. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you know, how, oh, they, yeah. how they balance it is, like, every gun has a fire rate, and it has a certain amount of energy that it draws from you, that sort of thing. Oh, fant- fantastic. Yeah. And, of course, like, this is between... Because the levels are made up of different rooms that are all stacked against each other. And you can sort of choose... This is a roguelike. Mm. Uh, sorry, rogue light. Light. You, there there's no go. permadeath um, per mission. Like, if you die in the mission, you got to restart the mission. But all the missions are the same. But, like, the rooms branch out. And once you're done with the room, you can choose to move on to the next room that's in it, like... Like, you can choose which door you walk into next. Okay. And this, I believe, is a challenge room I'm going into or something. There's different kinds of rooms, but you go in with your guns. And of course. And between rooms, um, you, can, you can't really switch up between rooms, but there's certain closets that will let you go in and you can um, buy more weapon parts during the mission or you can just uh, rebuild your guns. So it's nice. It's very much a bullet hell, though. So, uh, what you are see you fighting? How, robots? Other, they're, other they're, robots? They're essentially robots that are also made of guns, but they're red. <laughs> yes. Um, and you can see. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, jeez. It's a, oh, they're coming after you. It's a bullet hell, and like there's melee enemies, like those dogs that I just blew up. Yeah, I can see why this would crash your computer. There's these. Oh, there's my these, lord. Yeah, there's these flying things. There's also like stationary guns. So, pretty much in this game, you have to not stop moving, which is Good. helped by the fact that you have. Uh, like, you can only upgrade your own health, your energy levels, and your jumps. Okay. Those are the only things that, like, carry over throughout missions. So, you can... I think you can get up to, like, eight jumps or something and, like, you know, a ton of health and energy. And you saw my energy there drop to the bottom, so I couldn't yeah, shoot anything. Yeah, yeah. I had to wait for it to regen. But, yeah, there's, like, jump pads, everything. It's, oh, so there's... Yeah, there's not ammo you have to keep, worry about keep. Yeah. So, if you can build two amazing guns... But if they both consume energy out the wazoo, it's kind of pointless because you'll run out of energy. Um, Never going to worry about reloading? Yeah. So what I would usually do is go with like something rapid fire, low energy, and then Mm. I would go with something that's just all the barrels right on on one side, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Yes. So it's very much a bullet hell, and it's very fun. And and of course, like the voice actors are campy and everything. Like, Mm -hmm. we don't know why these uh, guns are attacking, but by golly, we'll get them, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. Just... Yeah, very light on the story in the game, but very much on the, like... Heavy on the gun. Heavy on the guns. <laughs> heavy on the guns. Shoot stuff. That's all you're doing in this game. I can get down with that. Like, oh, I, yeah. I mean, I love Doom. This sound, oh, this this looks and kind of feels like it moves just like it, so I'm like, this looks like yeah. fun to me, too. The, the one thing I did need to get used to in this, it's a little floaty. Yeah. So, like, okay. if you're, like... I mean, I'll pretty much all, uh, only run... I think you can kind of only run this game. Uh, but there's only, like, one movement speed. And then, like, when you jump, you're kind of in a glide. Hmm. Like, like there's, yeah, not, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a little bit less gravity than there should be, which is yes. nice. Um, but, yeah, all the rooms are different. Um, well, you'll see, like, repeated stuff. But, I mean, I think I was, like, three or four hours into this game. And, like, I was still seeing new, new stuff. That would surprise me. Um, certain levels and stuff. Huh. But no, it gets very difficult though. How's the music? The music's good. Okay. It's, it's a, I think it's not like heavy metal, but it is like rock, like okay, pretty yeah. quick paced, uh, a little fun, bit fun, of techno fun. in there too. It's just, it's a good mix of fast paced music and it kind of ebbs and flows as you go into the rooms. Like there's definitely combat music and like chill music. Sure. Um, but it's, it's a solid game. It looks like a lot of fun. Oh yes. No bullet hells are always fun. In my opinion. I am very biased though toward any first person shooter. This is fair. Yes. So how do you feel about that? Mm-hmm. That next cod, baby. That, I the next cod. <laughs> I mean, I've never really been really into fishing, so. I no, really, you don't want cod fish. That's a game I have yet to play. A fishing simulator. They have them. They. I mean, I've even seen fishing simulators where it's like, 
like an actual plastic fishing pole. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. I should try it. Yeah, I mean, World of Warcraft got fishing, so it's a fishing simulator. That's fair. 10 yeah. out of 10. Yep. I don't think you can get to Love Lady or whatever it is now <laughs> just through fishing. But. Only in our glorious RuneScape can we get to level 100 fishing. 99. 99. I think, I, think, I, think, I think those levels kept out at 90. <laughs> yes. Oh, RuneScape. I'm going to become an only RuneScape streamer. Please don't. Please I will don't. not. I will not. Okay. Coming in only talking about uh, the great deals I made I think you, at the market. Yeah, I, th- I, think, I think it would be about that and about, guys, athletics, grinding. Oh, my God. <gasps> oh, man. What do you edit? We haven't talked editing software. Let's talk editing software. Uh, just because, it, I mean, it's something I've always used because it's something I've used for, like, projects for work and school and all stuff. I, I actually use uh, Adobe Premiere Elements. Mm. I, uh... I've gotten pretty good at moving around in it, and I finally have a computer that can, you know, I can play back what I'm editing in real time instead of just... So, that's the one that I use typically, Mm -hmm. um, because it's just... It's very nice to see everything. And you and you capture in what? Uh, uh, OBS. uh, Oh, yes, 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 yes. I I use OBS, because it's, you know, it's a... It's really handy. Mm-hmm. It, OBS is very handy. Um, yes, yes, yes. I capture in OBS as well. Um, I mean, you taught me how to use OBS. Mm-hmm. I had yeah. no idea that it was a thing, and then you were like, hey. It's free. Surprise. It's free. And I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. This mm-hmm. is kind of everything I've been looking for that yeah. I didn't know it was an actual thing. Yeah, yeah. And it I makes mean, so I, much sense. Yeah. And I, I knew, I figured from your, like, OBS to me is very simple with, with the scenes and the sources. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. this is fine. I just click back and forth between them. Uh, yeah, no, OBS is great for recording anything on a computer, um, mm-hmm. as well as off of a computer, I guess. If you just I would if say you so. just need to capture audio, it's great for that too. I mean, it's great for managing like the devices you would need mm-hmm. to use it. Like, yeah. like it tells like even if it's like okay, you don't have a, 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 a even though you don't have a camera like a webcam in your computer, I can still detect that you have one up updated. So I'm gonna go to that one automatically. Yeah, or just yeah. you know, like I'm saying, detecting your devices automatically. It's very nice. Yes, uh, and then I. For editing, uh, use a very fancy uh, shortcut. Hell yeah! It works. Uh, it works for what I want it to do. I'm not doing anything fancy with it. I'm just cutting, cutting, mm-hmm. cutting and pasting. Pretty cutting much and is, is the extent of my editing, for the most part. Um, but yeah, that's our little break of into in, behind the scenes of the uh, uh, capture and uh, editing software. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, if you're interested in using them. Feel free to use them. Well, well, well Adobe. Okay. Well, I also, I, I'm also like looking to like make shorts yes, and films yes. and stuff. So there's a there's a, there's a reason yes. I, I I'm putting the money forward to yes, do that because yes. it's very important to me. Yes. But no, I want to make a video about a killer deep freezer <laughs> that stabs people with a banana. Oh gosh, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be art. The banana's frozen, right? Yes. Okay, no more spoilers. Yes, 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 yes. No more spoilers. Don't want to know anything. Else. Yes. It's very, it's very integral. Um, yes. But yes, plot. OBS, shot cutter free, and if you're interested in Adobe, feel free to check them out. Um, yes. Like 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 Yort said, if you're wanting to get into that whole world of editing and everything, or, they do they do have you they do give you a 30 day f- uh, free trial for any of their Adobe software, and it's it's really nice, but God, it's expensive. Well, good lord, that's that's the Adobe walled garden, as it were. Yes. Um. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. Uh, now I will say, uh, getting back into video games. Yes. Uh, another game. Fortnite. I no, <laughs> no, no. Another game I played a while ago, but I don't think we talked about on here was. Uh, oh yeah, Infested Planet. Yeah, for mm. sure. No, for sure. It's a good game. Um, I don't think we talked about. It's uh, it's. Hmm? I don't think we talked about. No, this. no I don't think. Uh, I I I have a playthrough up or a review or something. I have some videos of it. Mm. Um. But it's very much a uh, strategy game, top-down strategy game, very simple art style. But oh my god, the uh, enemy you're fighting in it is very much—it's not like traditional um, strategy game enemies. Like the enemy is very hive-minded, will going straight at you. You know? Okay, kind of that um, berserker rush kind of thing. Almost that um, kind of war of attrition, maybe. War of attrition. More war of attrition. You're essentially fighting a hive alien that creates hives, but then they'll all attack you, right? Okay. 
So you kind of have to, you, and you have limited resources, of course. Yes. Um, of course. Um, but yeah, you'll get, you essentially have troops and like you can get turrets and things, of course. And you can get cool upgrades that affect your units and stuff. But yeah, you pretty much are just fighting these little bug things that come out of these hives. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And this is, I think, the tutorial, because yeah, this is my first impression. This is the tutorial, which is pretty simple. But you can imagine if they're coming at you from different angles, from different Horrifying. hives, Horrifying. you have to see which hives are sending out more or less. It's very, yeah, the, yeah. it gets very complex. And like even the enemies have little turret things too, which can be a problem too because they shoot back at you. Yeah, Do there are there... Mm -hmm. Oh, I see they're landing in an area. Okay. Yeah, well, they actually dropped some supplies there for me because uh, the game, I think... Oh, yeah, weapons. Yeah, you can upgrade your unit's weapons and stuff. Very um, nice. You can see it's kind of limited because, like, I don't have that many troops on screen. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it would be... It's a squad management. Like, it's meant to be squad-sized, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't... You know, you can't get super big in the game, but the simplicity of the game kind of lends itself to being like, okay, like... You're not going to run a whole army of 100 troops or whatever, but, you know, you can. Um, yeah. And there's even, like, airdrop stuff. Like, you have ammo, which is your uh, um, it, it, a regenerating um, resource that allows you to do special uh, oh, that's nice. and stuff. That's nice. Yeah. And so you can send Peel the Guard out. It's, it's a good game. Um, it's not too expensive. Uh, I mean, definitely get it if it's on Steam sale. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, no, it's yeah, it's solid. Solid. If you're if you're looking for a strategy game to waste a couple, you know, hours into, this is definitely for you. Oh, look at those turrets! I see them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, you can get turrets too, but then you know, it's just it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah resource management. Yeah, to me, it's less resource management, except for your ammo. Like if you're if you're gonna rely on like your special moves or whatever, it's a lot more um, point defense uh, management. Mission one, look at that. Yeah, mission one, that was it. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. And Incredible. If, if you love stats, uh, at the end of every little match, you get you get all your stats. And you got seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, it's like a thousand per whatever. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, and you of course have stuff you go from mission to mission. So it's a solid game. Looks fun. Um, definitely very much. If you're a strategy guy, oh man, that's that's your game. If you're a strategy player. I have to give it a shot because I do like a good strategy game. Oh yes, uh, a good strategy game, you say? Yes, a good strategy game. Uh, we're gonna go into uh, uh, two beloved of mine. Well, one beloved more so than the other, but two beloved of my uh, strategy games I enjoy quite a bit. Um, both you can see on my channel or whatever. But mm. Warhammer Forty Thousand Dawn of War. Ooh. My now I can't remember a lot. But I believe this is the first ever like Warhammer game I played um, mm. that I can remember playing. Let me let me say that this is the first Warhammer game I remember playing, and oh my god, I loved it! I loved it okay. so much. Um, I mean, it's it's an old school RTS. You know, it's got some drawbacks. Like this is as far out as you can zoom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not perfect, but like, oh man, the voice acting. Oh yeah, the voice acting, and they had cutscenes that were fully in the oh. super low polygon like it was the same engine you were doing the top down oh sorry it was the same engine that they did the top down view from where everything was almost passable but they would have cameras right here in people's faces of them voice acting and of course the polygons are so glow uh, uh so, so small like their their heads are just tilting up and down oh god their lips can't move it's like just this face it's like yeah yeah horrifying dawn of war they're like look this is what we got to do. Let's take it up to the step of Warhammer Forty Thousand and just do it. And it was great. Now this. Now I am very, mm -hmm. I am very a novice in my in my in my knowledge of the lore mm -hmm. of Warhammer Forty K. Yep. Though I did read all of the Gaunt's Ghosts, uh, Dan Abnett books. Okay. So that is about all. That is the 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 best glimpse I have into the Imperium of Man. So I don't know who you're playing as. Uh, you're and playing. Um, you're playing as the Blood Ravens. Okay. Um, which are a chapter of uh, of uh, Space Marines. Okay. Um, and oh, I forgot the name of the planet. But essentially, the, the whole thing revolves around you're on this planet because you're planning to be here, or whatever. Um, and there is some chaos, and there's like Chaos Marines who are there too. The Eldar are there too. Yes, the because, Eldar. Yeah, and of course there's you know um, the Imperial Guard, which oh man. They're my favorite faction. I don't, I don't care. People like Space Marines, like not nah. Imperial Guard. Mm -hmm. Imperial Guard, foot soldiers. 
get screwed, screwed over by everyone and you know literally everybody yeah it's yeah. they get wiped out and i mean can fodder i mean is, hey, is it, is it, is it ter- what hey what there's no greater glory than die for your emperor i mean it's the grimdark yeah. baby it's, isn't that what it's, it's called greatest, grim, it's grimdark grimdark it's, yeah it's, yeah it's a yeah of the uh for 40k century oh man yeah but yeah you're pretty much like they found an excuse to have all the factions here pretty much on this planet because there's some chaos trinket or something on the planet that Brilliant. when opened up could unleash a whole new chaos storm across the galaxy. You know, that kind of stuff. I love it. Um, and of course, the main story revolves around this, but at the same time, like between every level, they show you a map of the general area you're in and the orcs are just closing in oh, on gosh. everyone. Because that's the thing I love about uh, Warhammer. It's like, well, in actuality, you know, Anyone who has the logistics of whatever battle you're taking place, they're going to win. Yeah. And the orcs got it in this planet. Because <sighs> they're just like fungus people, right? Or fungus uh, creatures. They're, thing. they're essentially a fungus, which is why they're cannibalistic in a, in a fashion, after mm. a fashion. Um, but yeah, they're essentially sentient fungus who are just like DACA. DACA, DACA, DACA. More, more DACA, more red. Um, Less murder. More murder. <laughs> more murder. More murder for the orcs. I mean, that's what them orcs do. Yes, they do. Um, but yeah, it's a it's looks a, fun. Yeah, it's a traditional RTS. Um, I believe this came out in either, either in the late '90s or the early 2000s. But very, very run of the mill for your RTS of that that era. You have a little mini map, blink and tell you where to go. You know, very nice. And of course, I always play all RTSs the same though, where it's like dig in, tr- you know, slowly kill the enemy through attrition. I have not played an RTS um, game before. Oh, I mean. The great thing about that strategy is a lot of the old games like this, they would actually have your resources over time run down, right? Mm-hmm. So as long as you out, as long as you out killed the enemy with your troops, like essentially invested in good quality troops and just kept killing the enemy's enemies without them killing yours, you would just win through attrition because their resources would run out and yeah. you would keep accruing resources. Yeah, okay. it's, it's a, a little bit of a broken system that a lot of RTSs dug behind, um, but they were also kind of looking at it uh, from the point of view of a uh, multiplayer as well. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So they didn't want they didn't want the game to last forever with everyone having infinite resources to draw from. So it's understandable, but when it comes to the AI, the AI, you know, not that, not that. They're not that smart, and I mean, just 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 watch this. I mean, I call in a little turret, mm, airdrops in mm-hmm. from orbit. My little, you know, marines just sitting there, it's just hanging out, it's just perfect. chilling. It's perfect, it's perfect. And they just um, come to you. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, AI, not so smart back then, but yeah, Warhammer 40,000 uh, 40, Dawn of War, and I believe there's like a Warhammer forty thousand Dawn of War two, Warhammer forty thousand Dawn of War. I don't know if they're the same story, but I will probably look into them. At hmm. some point. Interesting. I have just started kind of looking at the Warhammer 40,000 stuff, so I might look into that. Because uh-huh. I, I think it's a, I think it'd be a fun kind of yeah. fantasy and world to kind of go back, look into there, again. Because it's, mm-hmm. it's very dramatic and very, yeah. very all over the place, and I'm excited about it. Because it's fun. There's the, the one thing I, will, I do like about um, what Games Workshop has done with Warhammer <laughs> um, is Games Workshop has kind of, for a while, been like, hey... We're not going to make video games. Come to us if you got a good video game idea. Mm. So, I mean, there's been some cheesy cash-in, you know, mobile games, but then there's been stuff like, you know, um, uh, Battlefleet Gothic, hmm. um, which I need to play through at some point in Battlefleet. Like, there's been really good titles out there that have been produced that way, but then there's also been, you know, mobile kind of trash cash-in mm. stuff. Um, yeah. Which, you know, it's okay, you know. Games Workshop, it's their IP. They can choose to do, they can do what they yeah, want. They can do whatever they want with it. Um, but <laughs> Until I take it from them. I mean, do, do, do you know how IP works? I'm going to win it in court. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Look, man. I will not. Uh, do not give this man any money for Give me money. Case, but, uh, do, not, do not. Yeah, no, I would not. I would my not. Patreon. We're going to fight the good fight. To no. take IP from Games Workshop. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. No. Okay. Absolutely not. No, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, they made some good games, like I said. but um, And another somewhat good game, um, some would argue, um, would be, uh, yes, Total War Warhammer, the first one. 
Hmm. Uh, Why would this not be considered a good game? You, you seem like you you are on the side of the detractors here. I am in the middle. Um, with all Warhammer, this is fantasy Warhammer, not mm-hmm. 40K. 40K. Yes. Um, as with all Warhammer, I love the genre. I love the genre, and I love the, uh, you know, the, very much the uh, factions. The factions are all varied and have their own culture. It's not like some fantasy games where you're like, oh, we have the high elves and the wood elves, which yeah. <laughs> in Warhammer Fantasy, you have the high elves and the wood elves. They're completely different in how they operate. One wants to just be in the forest, and the other one's like, no, we're civilized elves. And mm-hmm. we'll, it's like, okay, like there's actual difference in that. Um, uh, what do you know about Total War games? Total War? Um, very little other than what I've seen in commercials. I mean, basically Total War games initially were like trying to recreate historical, you know, historical fiction battles, mm-hmm. right? To where like, we'll put you in charge of a leader from like ancient Shogun Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and so they were meant to be historical in that all the resources there were historical and you as a player could control the history of what happened, right? Fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So generals could you, you generals could still die. Faction leaders could still die. You would always have heirs and stuff and whatever, you know. There was always a line of secession in the games, but they could die. Mm-hmm. Total War Warhammer kind of threw some stuff out of the window. Um, like old general units um, in, the, in the actual historical games that they made. They were a general with a whole bodyguard with them, as it would be historically, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't just send your general out there by yourself. No. Well, in, um, yeah, you can see here, uh, my general in Total War Warhammer, he, uh, he's just one guy. So, they, they okay. took, yeah, cause, because it's more of a fantasy, I mean, it is a fantasy game, um, they went with uh, your generals and your heroes were individual units. Uh. They were individuals in an army. Um, and you can actually see um, more in, um, oh, I can't remember. But there's a new Total War game out that, like, kind of mixes and matches off, all, like, different levels of these at the beginning of the game campaign. Yeah. And it's like, choose. Do you want high fantasy, where it's more like Warhammer? Do you want actual historical? Or do you want a mixed blend, you know? Hmm. So they did add some, Total War finally did add some, like, option for you, you know? But, man, yeah, it's not a... Uh, Total War Warhammer was, was their first departure mm-hmm. from this. Um, I mean, you, it, what you, and what do you think about that? How do you feel? I mean, does it really change? How does it to, really change the gameplay for you? To me, the big thing, like I like what they did in the like the newest Total War, where they're like, you have an option going in. What do you want? Do you want high fantasy? Do you want this? I mean, anytime you can give the player an option is good. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime you take away an option or say like, this is the only way you can play the game. Have fun. Um, which I will admit, Total War, they've, for the most part, been, um, you know, appreciative and acceptive of uh, the modding community and adding at least a place, uh, at least adding mod support, you know, having mod support with their games. Mm. Um, so that's always been nice and being able to change stuff in the game is very nice. And just because I've never played any, it's, yep. it's interesting to me how you, how you can paint your troops. We, well, there's always the, uh, there's always the been two maps, um, really, that you have to worry about in the game. There's, mm. like, the overworld campaign map where, like, you have settlements and you have armies that are represented by an individual character moving around. Mm. And, of course, individual armies have limited move range. Here's the battle map where your army figure and an enemy army figure have come up next to each other and decided to have battle. Mm. Um, and at that point... Every um, unit in your army that's been marching has an individual unit card, and each unit card holds however many troops, and there's different ki- types. Like, I have spearmen right here who are advancing, I believe. Yeah, yeah, those are those are some green skins. Um, oh. And this is a pretty early game, though. Um, but I do have some regiments of renown. Um, and then, okay, so there I have some uh, 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 light militia who have pistols and swords. Uh, there's my hero unit coming in. Uh, I think I'm hoping... I don't know what I'm doing with him. Uh, I think he's just there for moral support. Nope. Yep. Oh. Yeah, he's going to fight somebody. But yeah, so you have range units of different types. You know, um, firearm units. Mm-hmm. They, have to, they have to have direct line of fire. They can't shoot over your friendly enemy, uh, your friendly troops. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to have them either on the flanks or in the center with the center, you know, your line uh, um, offset forward from that. So... The one thing that Total War Warhammer to me did the best was like 
here's a mishmash of unequal troops that everyone has, right? Like, everyone has different types of troops that fight in different ways. Have yeah. fun with it. Oh, okay. So That to- is nice. Yeah, Total War Warhammer is the first one to do that. Because, I mean, yes, Total War kind of gets repetitive. The To me, the old ones kind of got repetitive. I mean, you had a couple factions who, like, oh, we have horse archers. Like, that was the big surprise. It's like, <laughs> uh, oh, there's one fa- There's a couple factions in the whole world of Europe that you're in that have horse archers, right? Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you get into Total War Empire and Napoleon, where it's like, well, we have mortars. So. We have cannons, and we have bigger cannon. You know? Yeah. It's like, and well, we have muskets, and we have muskets. And it's like, well, at that point, you're having to increase your research to where you can figure out how to have one guy kneel in front of the other and two rows shoot at the same time. Yeah. So to me, that was more of a logistical game, which, to be fair, Total War Empire, like, if you're going to have an empire, that's what you need. Is yeah, you would have to. You'd, yeah. you'd have to have all of it combined, which kind of made sense for the time and everything. But Might not make for the most riveting gameplay. No, not, not, so, not so much riveting gameplay, but more of a... And, and what they were doing with this was more of having, like, individual battles be closer like, have the battles that you... Like, the battles here, you see that you fight, have them be a, a more of the contest of the game and less so the uh, economy that you're driving behind it. Okay. Because, um, I mean, it's totally possible in... Um, oh, and here you see my... I guess I have reinforcements coming in. Or troops I forgot about, which is entirely possible. <laughs> reinforcements? Um, my God. Yeah, yeah. So now I have some crossbowmen who can shoot over my friendly troops. Oh, very nice. Uh, very shooting nice. over, yes. Um... But yeah, no. Total War Warhammer, definitely their first foray into the mixed uh, combat of Warhammer Fantasy, which I, I, I feel like they did okay, but, you know, there's always some uh, uh, mistakes. Huh. Like, uh, I think the, uh, who are they? The Undead. There's Undead, who are basically, you Be know. fun, yeah. They're vampires. I'm good for it, can, yeah. You know, are necromancers. They'll steamroll pretty much... The entire Empire early game, if you're not careful. No. Well, um, I mean, they are vampires. Yeah, yeah. There's just... Nothing balances real well when you have one faction in the game that in one turn can raise, like, half of their army from the dead. Yeah, that kind of just... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of just wrecks shop. <laughs> well, not just wrecks shop, but if you have a big bat, And this is the other thing. If you have a big battle where you both barely get out and, like, you barely defeat them, right... There's now a big battlefield full of dead bodies. They can just... Well, in a in a region with a battle that has had a lot of big battles, they have more of a roster to choose from that they can summon in one turn. Lovely. Yeah. Now, it is a little bit more expensive than recruiting for them, but I mean, if I can get five or six, even I think up to eight, like, troops in one turn? That's a good choice. It's definitely going to be... It's definitely a, a nice tactic to have. Yes, very much so. No, yes. Yep, no. Successful battle. Enemies routing except for... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, they also... There's certain units in the game. So a big part a big part about Total War is like fighting and like making the enemy army break. Yeah. Making them not want to fight anymore. Well, in Total War, there's units that don't break. They never break. Oh. Because um, the flagellants are people for the Empire who... Mm. They have the fervor of, you know, the of the Emperor King himself inside of them, and they do not want to break ever, so they will fight to the death no matter what. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. It's real great. Are these them here? Uh, that I am surrounding there and killing very slowly, yes. But you can see what happens is, as those units fight on, other, uh, other people who started to run away are like, wait a second, maybe we can win. Yeah, we're still fighting. We can still have a chance. Yeah, so it kind of does draw the battles out more, which I sort of like um you know i like a drawn out battle yeah like, oh well, yeah it's fun it's, it's more of a challenge yeah. it's just yeah and there we go it doesn't victory! it usually it usually doesn't make a difference though victory unless you have like a whole ton of um a whole ton of an army made up of the uh individuals who don't flee <laughs> in which case it's very hard to kill uh, my god kill an army off it's like a 30 minute battle oh yeah good lord they're just running over the map just one one, one of them at a time just we could still win. Oh man, but yeah, no total uh, in total war. Oh, they're like ants. Oh yes, yes. You can zoom in like right on uh, down onto them. In the total war, all I think all total wars, most all total wars, they have multiplayer. 
Mm, and most know. of the multiplayer is battle focused, not campaign focused. Although some do have multiplayer campaigns, which is great too. But no, oh my gosh, Total War Warhammer has the most ridiculous online multiplayer battles. Why is that? Because it's people just cheesing each other. <laughs> You'll get people, because like the dwarves have this thing called a gyro bomber. Which, which is, doesn't sound good. It's a helicopter that has bombs on it and cannons. And so the, the great thing about the dwarves, though, they have no cavalry. So in multiplayer, you have to have a general. So they'll have one general who's on foot and just keep it away from the enemy and send the gyro bombers. My God. This is ridiculous. No, what, you, what faction do you play as? Uh, I, I I love dwarves in Reichland. Like they're my two favorite. You know, okay. you okay. know, uh, dwarves mainly for like you know the beard, the beard, the axes. The, I like the axes. The, 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 they have a, they have a Slayer unit. Ah, which have taken the Slayer oath to slay and only slay from then on out. Brilliant. And they're the unit of the dwarves that I that never breaks. Oh, amazing. And of oh course, God. of course, since they're the Slayers. They don't wear armor. No. Why they got they? no armor. They just got axes, baby. My God. Just axes and beards. Do you have them in your, in your little army? Uh, your little no, army, I'm Reichland. Sorry. I'm Reichland, which oh. is the Empire. Which mm. Reichland, I just like, they have tanks. They literally have tanks. So it's like, all right, let me get like four tanks in front of me. Let me get a line of people with uh, rifles behind them. Good. Everyone but Chaos pretty much is solved with that. And, ah. and Chaos, Chaos, oh my God, Chaos. chaos. What's wrong with Chaos. I mean, do you know the lore of chaos in Warhammer, right? I it, stop me if I'm wrong. There, it's uh, psychic abilities, mm -hmm. like the like the, the evil psychic not evil, but like negative psychic energies basically produce chaos, mm -hmm. and they in turn want to destroy everything or to, or kill humanity. Yeah. Humanity is essentially kind of the thing creating it because of the site. Because no. they generate. How's that? What? Yeah. Well, correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Chaos is created by anything that thinks about chaos, basically. Right? Okay. Like, okay. Chaos okay. is a self perpetuating thing, unlike order, which you have to make order out of. You know. Yes. Yes. Um. But the whole point of Warhammer Fantasy Chaos. That's what happens when the end times come. Uh, is chaos comes and destroys everything. Like, that's the end times of Warhammer Fantasy is literally chaos comes and destroys everything eventually. Okay. Um, but, yeah, the chaos, like, they're just super heavily armored. A lot of them don't, pretty much all of them cause fear to, like, any unit. I would imagine so. And, no. yeah, they have a lot of just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. It's just, like, if, if, if the dwarves have gyrocopters and you have tanks, what do they have? Um, just giant ogres or like giant they, they have some they have some giants they also have some ogres okay good okay, um, got both they also have oh man they have this one cannon which is basically a living siege cannon good that just fires giant explosive multi-projectile stuff at, I'm, yeah i'm sure that's great yeah. for for, it's, for it's regiments morale when you when you fight the chaos don't worry about how much help like how many units you're gonna have left just matter whether or not you're going to win or lose. <laughs> like, yeah. like, no matter who you are, like, even if you have, like, two full stacks next to each other taking on Chaos, just still maybe not even, like, they are they are some heavy, heavy troopers. Jeez. And, of course, Total War's got, like, uh, Warhammer at least has, like, so many, It's, like, easy, normal, hard, very hard. Legendary. Mm -hmm. Realist. Uh, 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 and there's also the uh, realistic option for battles, which is, like... Okay, it's a battle. You can't like pause time. You can slow down time. Mm -hmm. You can't pause time. That kind of thing. That's so, nice. Yeah. No, another uh, solid installment in Total War. Um, yeah, I just I understand why Total War does it, but they do. Uh, they get stuck on a trend like that. Like there's three Total War Warhammers now, and they all kind of came out. Of, yeah, I get why they do it, but, but but to me, like release less games, release more refined games, but. Yeah, it's it's gotta yeah. make that bottom dollar. No, I understand, but also like you know, yeah. If you only like only update if you have some quality to add, like yeah. it, that's what I kind I, of. I will say, Total War Warhammer Two. I don't. I haven't looked at three or what it has done at all yet. Um, but I think they added new factions in three. But two, there's like they they're like here's your new campaign. But also, if you have Total War Warhammer One like this one, and Total War Warhammer Two, Mortal Empires. 
they literally just put, took both maps from both campaigns, smashed them together, and said, "Have fun." <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Here's a here's a bigger game. Here's a game that's twice the size of either of these. Have fun with it. Good times. Although they kind of, in my opinion, they gave up on uh, what was it? Ship to ship combat in Total War Warhammer. Ah. Uh, Guess what happens if two ships meet at sea in Total War Warhammer? They just. Roll the dice. Nope, there's, oh, there's some, some land, land here. That's, that's what that's what they used to do in Total War Rome, <laughs> like the OG. Yeah, they're just like just roll some dice. Let's see oh, who wins. you have more troops, pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. Now no, they just go to land and then fight it out. Well, well, oh my god! You won't even go to land. It'd be like two ships, and they'll be like, ah, we're gonna fight you. Map generate. <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. Good. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You can only get two. You can only get two uh, uh, fantasy in my fantasy. I can't suspend my disbelief that this land just happened to be here in the middle of the ocean. God, uh, it is. It is great though. It is great. Yeah, it looks like fun. Frostpunk. I'm still working on. Oh, no, I just. I just. There's so much I want to talk about. It's kind of like you saw me get into Total War Warhammer there. Like, there's just so much. There's a lot into it. it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Total War Warhammer is more simple <laughs> than I think than Frostpunk. Just because mm. Frostpunk coming at it from so many different angles. And I really want to see what Fro- they're calling it Frostpunk Two, the second one. I want to I want to see what they're doing with that. It's going to be Diesel apparently. Oh, Diesel okay. Punk. Okay. Diesel okay. Punk, and you're yeah surviving what? the post Frozen World. When did When did Frostpunk come out? I think you mentioned it, but I don't remember exactly the date. I want to say 2010 ish somewhere like. Oh, that. Okay, so 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 a, a minute ago. Yeah. So it has... I mean, in game dev time, it you know depends on yeah. I mean you know it's it, it's not. A year ago, yeah, well, not, they're not pumping year. it out like no, just no, go. No, this isn't Frostpunk, uh, Black Ops, Cold War Five. Oh my god! Uh, no, I can't stand those. So... I just, I just love that we've gotten to the point where they went back to World War One, which they kind of skipped in those early Call of Duties and yeah. Battlefield, and then they. Are now moving back forward in time to like futuristic sci- it's I, like, it's like you- I'm so I'm, I'm so I, yeah I've never been I've never been one really for like multiplayer online shooter games I just don't see the appeal you, you, you know what they've like they've done studies on them right mm. you know what pe- they found out tell me in those multi in those games they essentially try and design the maps and everything so that the chance like like not the chance but whether or not you die or not or have a good game is as randomized as they can make it so even if you're the most elite mlg player like yeah the game some like like the way the maps and everything are designed is to be random yeah is to be like because, I mean, you look at any of those maps and it's like, how many, like, rooms there are? How many different entryways are there? Like, there's always more than you can cover. They're all, you know, there's yeah. very few places in those games where it would be, like, in a real battlefield where it's like, and that's the other thing. If you all just communicated. Easy. You know, easy. You know, yeah. you have a team of eight communicating against a team of eight that doesn't communicate. Who's going to win? You know? it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah. But no, everyone needs to sprint off in their own direction yeah, it's, it's and a, dive bomb I'm a one-man army. I'm a one-man army, just like in the campaign. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to, like, dive bomb down eight flights of stairs. Why do they have projectile knives? They had that at some point. Oh, my God, They're yeah. Like knives. They like... had the bli- yeah, the ones that shoot out. They had the little um, cars that rolled around with, like, C4. And you could just immediately... Oh, yeah, it was... That's when you were playing the terrorists, right? Oh yes, 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 yes. No, no, that was that was. I mean, well, yeah, it was America. Yeah. Okay. Hey, <laughs> no, hey, no, hey, no, hey, no. hey. Not terrorists, okay. No, oh, that's fair. That's not fair. terrorists. I mean, we just came war crimes. We're not terrorists. You know, you know, there's a difference. Difference. Uh, we but. should stop it before we get uh, too political on here. Shh. Hey, hey, too hey, political. Hey. None of that. None of that in my. Po- games aren't political. We're, no, no. Games are not meant to be political at all. Now, excuse me, I'm going to go play Bioshock for a couple hours. The most apolitical game ever created. And I'm going to go into Total War Warhammer Fantasy, which is just about chaos overriding order, which is not political in any such way, shape, or form. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, that is gonna be it for us today. Um, where 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 can we find uh, Yort Corp? You can find Yort Corp on my channel on YouTube. Just look up Yort Corp. Uh, I have an Instagram as well. Same thing, just one word, and you can find it there. Uh, I am a formal bust. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, of course. Uh, uh, 
And also, you can find me at aformalbust.org. Ooh, uh, org. Yes. Uh, once again, I've been a formal bust. Thank you for consuming this content and uh, for enjoying this episode of Our Gaming Life. Uh, thank you all for watching. Feel free to do the stuff. As always, take care and drink some H2O.